YNS7. Thank you for tuning. Got April. Kinetic works in the house. Say hi to people, April. Hello, everyone. Hello. Great days. Hope your days are going as bright as mine. <laughs> Always a perfect day. So what we're going to be talking about today is basically how delegating accountability works, right? Because there's, mm. of course, we wrap everything around psychology. So there's a psych psychology and impact. So let's let's from the door, April, let's talk about what accountability is. Mm. What's your yeah. high level overview of accountability? Oh. What's it look oh. like? Goodness gracious. Um, it really looks like honesty and transparency. Um, it, it really looks like understanding your capabilities and not exceeding that. Um, and if you feel like you did exceed that or close to recognizing that and reaching out for support, guidance, um, criticism, uh, motivation, encouragement to be able to ensure that the goal, task, objective that you set forth, it gets, you know, best attempts to be achieved. And if not achieved, you have uh, a clear understanding of you know, what you could improve on to have a better attempt at success the next go around. Um, it also looks like being able to have people around that have objectivity and is not just going to agree to you. Um, I don't want to say the words like check you if you're wrong, but at least be able to um, provide a, a, a very perspective uh, mm -hmm. to allow for new thought. And within accountability, it's, you know, you seeing that, recognizing that. Um, and when you know better, you do better. <laughs> when you know better, you do better. Yeah. So that's true. That's true. Let's take a look at the etymology. Right. Mm -hmm. So here's the, uh, here's business. Let's get um, accountability here. So account is calculation right mm-hmm which basically was from to count so the point I wanted to make with the etymology is when we're talking about the delegation of accountability right mm -hmm. everything you just said what happens when we the people if account means to count, right? Like, like you got your court shirt on there. <laughs> if accountability is to count, what is the danger if we give away our or delegate our ability to count? Now, I just have some clarifying questions. Now, when you say delegating the ability to count, and that means in reference by me being a person, I'm sharing the um, the responsibility of acknowledging how many things were achieved, unachieved, and if it was not achieved, what happened within that? That's basically where you're saying I'm sharing responsibilities and what do I lose or gain by sharing those responsibilities? Delegating, yeah, giving give. Like you saying, here, take care of this for me. It's kind of like, you know, that's, and yes, I appreciate the fact that you want to clarify the question. And we, when we look at accountability, we can talk about business, right? We can talk about household. We can talk about community. We can talk about our accountability for the future generations. It's a lot of layers to accountability. So when we talk about, hey, delegating it, it sounds great, right? Like mm -hmm. um, we can, you know, a lot of what we talk about here on YNS7 is creating the codependency and mentally so that we can manifest it in the world to separate from big government and large corporations, right? That's an example of how we've delegated our accountability. We've got big government telling us what we can and can't do when the road is going to get fixed. We got big pharma telling us, you know, how we're supposed to heal ourselves, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we know, right, that kind of, kind of lead in the witness here. But now with that on the table, what are the dangers to delegating our accountability in those applications you just mentioned. Hmm. 
Okay. I mean, the the one danger that just stood out the most to me with relinqu relinquishing power or delegation in anything is um, who you relinquish this power to or delegating this power to is a danger because it can be given to the wrong person that has the wrong intentions. It can be given to the right person that has the wrong intentions. It can be given to uh, an individual that basically doesn't understand the tool that was provided. And so therefore like um, the the measuring of these accountability metric, metrics, if there's not like specifically an understanding or a common common likeness around what you're delegating, then you you, you lose the, the effectiveness. Um, because again, everybody has their position. And sometimes instead of delegating um, a person that is cognizant of things that need to be held accountable, um, those individuals normally are the ones that need to remain in position to have those metrics. Um, because obviously they have a keen eye to be able to acknowledge we need to find something that could hold people accountable, but also within accountability, there's room offered for improvements. And I think that's another step um, that also is a danger if not made aware of before anybody is delegated any type of power to say, I'm the person that can hold anyone accountable. Um, and then the next dangers is um, how are we uh, addressing the moral or ethical questions of this person entity system. What is that moral basis that is guiding these accountability measures? Um, and is it tainted with any type of um, ill intentions for a specific group of people? Is it really something that is going to be equitable in its real true form? Or is it something that again, can be watered down and hence another danger when it comes to delegating out these powers and who actually has this level um, or the responsibility of holding anything accountable to anything. I like it. I like it. The point you made made me think of it to could lead to weaponization issues, mm -hmm. right? Um, then you have the aspect of the something I've been uh, speaking for transact the shift from transactional leadership to transformative you know that's the mentality transactional leadership is the mentality of hey we've been doing it like this for 20 years well you know why change now let's keep going and it's like yeah but 20 years ago we couldn't send pictures on a cell phone so there's probably a lot better ways to do a lot of different things right mm -hmm. so we're we're often communities that are impoverished or not saying you say impoverished even but just not above the poverty level which most people don't realize is 80k a year individually right so we're the, normally late to the party. So, you know, a lot of stuff we're excited about was because we're just now getting access to it, but it was popping 20 years ago, right? That's transactional leadership. So transformative leadership is what you're saying, like in translation, Simon Sinek, once we agree on a destination, it makes it easier to overcome all the obstacles. So what happens is someone comes in there, gives us a song and dance, right? which, you know, North Carolina's uh, overall freedom ranking fell from 13th to 24th <laughs> and yeah. personal freedom rankings fell from 13th to 33rd. So mm -hmm. someone came in, gave the, hu the huge hurrah, hurrah song and dance with a with a no beard smile and a suit on. Right. Mm -hmm. And said, we're going to put money into infrastructure and education. And everybody's like, well, you know how that goes. They weren't really like that. But they on the TV, it was like, hurrah. Right. <laughs> so. And that's what they use to now take away personal freedoms here t 10 years later. Everything's going down the drain. So look at the word business, right? It's actually being busy, eager, anxious. So someone weaponized what our communities spent their time doing, promoting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the humble campaign. And then we wake up one day, wonder why we have nothing to be proud of, right? That's where people like you come in and kinetic works. So tell us a little bit about how you are actually helping to guide the community in the right direction in such a mental onslaught or attack. Some big words. I'll be putting that pressure on me. I don't do none of that. 
<laughs> I know you in the boardrooms. You ain't fooling me. Come on. Man, I don't do none of that, man. The <laughs> only thing that I do is allow for respectful conversation in um in uh, uncomfortable spaces and provide a um an avenue for people to be truth and them transparent self so we can join together in the middle of the shit that whatever I'm fussing about or we fussing about and really just work to use the shit as fertilizer and make something grow. And I'm just a, a, a humble community servant. <laughs> I just do my part in the community. Um, I just know that being consistent and transparent um, is something that is, you know, needed even when rebuilding trauma and, and things that we've experienced as black people, you know, and I don't want to keep talking about what we need. I just work to build it um, and allow for failure to happen and not ridicule people. And I allow um, for just thought to happen. And I introduce new perspectives in situations, you know, mm -hmm. um, an equitable perspective since I am um, trained in equitable advancements. I, I use my equitable lens. Let me make sure tongue twister. Um, that that's applied in spaces that I am. So basically, in any space that I am, just know that Black people are represented in the best way possible and make sure that the avenue that is discussed actually is going to benefit the everyday Black person, right? Not people that have access to support or whatever. People every day just wake up looking for it i'm that person um and that's it i think it's I just that. more people just being naturally who they are in the space that they are and taking up space positively that's all i do <laughs> accountability that's all i do is is everything it's infinity <laughs> so <laughs> that's great because that's really what it what it's going to take right um people have to understand that everybody plays a role in change and accountability plays a crucial role because it's going to help us build trust, reliability, the ethical conduct that you're mentioning for both um, personal and professional relationships. Mm -hmm. Even in the historical context, accountability has been very important. And in, in other civilizations, you know, they came up with these ways to do laws and conduct and all this stuff, right? How do you think? Um, What's one thing that you want to that you're working on right now um, in the community to grow our awareness of accountability? Because I think I think I think we are I think that's one of the elements that we just don't take seriously. Like, answer me this: What's your perspective on it? I know I gave you that one question. Let me piggyback because uh -huh. we see this in all cultures, a lot of cultures, right? It's the mindset of I'm doing well enough for my life. I might even have my uh, my little kids set in some way, shape, or form, whether it's a little college visit or, you know, a, a couple of dollars put up to start a business or get they, whatever they want. I got something for it, right? But I always look at the situation like if we don't do something to change the world, what does it matter what we're leaving them behind with in the world when we know the direction that that's going? So speak on the whole account of, go ahead. Just please, please. I, I really enjoy your translations. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, that's all it is, is a translation. That, that's, that's, that's basically all it is. Um, like, what do I do? It's, it's, I, I don't well, even like know how. To what would you like to see? If you could snap your fingers tomorrow, what, what would the community need to do? Um, everyone will be healed within internal traumas that they experience. So that way, if everybody's healed, then we automatically have a different outlook and perspective on how to treat each other because we're not coming from a place of somebody hurt me. So I think everybody needs a blank canvas, right? Mm -hmm. And we go from there. And that's the only way to, like, say, voided of colorism, racism, all that stuff. Then, yeah, everybody needs to be healed. Um, of everything and that's not not acknowledging trauma that's just saying if I snap my fingers tomorrow everybody will wake up and not have experienced a bit of trauma and at least we can start from there of well what do we want to build with each other community wise because I'm not mad at you because I'm hurt 
Now I'm mad at you because you're just an asshole. That's accountability. <laughs> <laughs> now that we checked one thing off the list, the next thing on the list is yeah, you're asshole. still an asshole. Yeah, you're still an <laughs> asshole, right? You're a, you was a hurt asshole before. Now you're just an asshole. So that's the next one. Get it, we get it. And and that's really the that's really what's fucking up a lot of shit because a lot of people don't realize they're assholes mm-hmm. because they're surrounded by a bunch of assholes who mm-hmm. support who support assholism, yeah. and then they got a whole little clique of assholes doing asshole shit, right? Yeah. And then the people that come in and be like, "Hey, we like to wipe assholes up off the street," they're the ones that seem to be the problems, right? Mm-hmm. Because no, because if you get rid of the assholes, you get rid of people's funding campaigns. You're getting rid of their 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 connections, their their relationships, their their feeling of acceptance, their their empowerment issues. So now mm-hmm. we got to have accountability on the emotional um, intelligence and mental health awareness to know that the community we got to have to have a rocky little uh, transition because we have to depart. We have to depart, but we have to build something to replace what we need to depart from. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So if anything, in a nutshell. I want us to depart from being unhealed individuals interacting with each other in a space that yes, person might be an asshole, but since they have an unhealed asshole tendency, it's going to be extra worse because it's not going to be perceived how it's supposed to be because they're already in the wrong space. So we got to cultivate these spaces. Hey, let's work on healing, right? So if anything else, Mm -hmm. Let's work on healing. Let's have different conversations um, with each other. Let me speak to people. Even when I'm mad at you, I'm going to talk to you differently until you get to a point of accountability is necessary of now you're tripping. Okay. Now we don't went through all the steps of this is things that is being recognized as a pattern, right? So it's never a criticism. You identify patterns. And when mm-hmm. you identify the pattern that you need to correct, that should be attacked with all ferocity, right? That should be what a person, a business works to remove and change because then you will be able to operate in a different space. So with me, I change my patterns and I operate differently. I'm in a healed space, so I speak to people differently. Will I check somebody or be in some type of assertive manner of accountability or recognizing the lack of accountability in other steps and them not really understanding how they're not looking at another person's perspective. They're not paying attention to what you're doing is actually having a different interaction, whether positive or negative and different. It's having a different interaction. Yes, as a person, you are free to be who you are, but if it's an unhealed, right person that is also an asshole one of those got to be removed (laughs) (laughs) oh both of them really because because ultimately the goal is to reach enlightenment right yeah we got to start somewhere again this is what i offer in the community i offer that base level step as somebody that's going to be very patient with community that's unhealed and work to pour in healing right and the great thing is i've been able to connect with other spaces places organizations and people that have a clear understanding of what it is that we need to do if the connection is made and you do the steps as person or business you should move on your own to fix whatever you need to to fix to heal from it And that's another level of accountability because that means that you as a person or entity is taking the steps no matter how uncomfortable or or rash or harsh, you know, saying that something is. But if it's a necessary step in that's not going to hurt anyone else too as well. Let's add that, too, because people make big steps that hurt a lot of people. And that's another part of accountability. You make steps that's not going to do harm to anyone, but you do the steps that's going to make you better. OK, so I like that because when you look at like Pasha Pablo being a critical solutions expert, reducing codependency on big government, large corporations, right? Mm-hmm. Through empowerment. A lot of that starts with the mentalities, right? So what we have is we have a pattern, as you said, of systemic and 
institutionalization and this being done to people and that being done to people. And when we trace it back, we can always point the finger to someone else, right? But then there's always three fingers pointing back at us, that golden rule. So <laughs> when do we stop? When do how do we encourage the community? Whether it's that personal relationship where maybe someone is looking at someone as an asshole in some application. Now, granted, we we identify that there are asshole for no reason. They just was born that way. The, yeah. Now, how do we identify times where people are looking at situations like this person is an asshole, not realizing that they're creating the trauma, the trauma, or they're creating the toxic experience that then they're they're not they're you know projecting different things onto the other person, not realizing that they need to take accountability themselves. Now, the same way when we look at the government, right? A lot of times when we look at the government for what we complain about, we realize it's user error. And we just don't know that the government's a corporation, right? Mm -hmm. And not really what we think it is, which means that we're using it incorrectly. So we can then change ourselves, take accountability and become we the people instead of we the orphans being cared for by the giant daycare. And that can trickle down of relationships, business boss, you know, employee boss relationship, all kinds of stuff. Give me the high, give me the equation there. Well, it was, it was just interesting in his in his own self because I had I had a few thoughts and then they left me and came back. Um, and then when it just comes as well, what sticks out the most is when you're saying um, system works. We know system works how it's supposed to. Um, it's not being used correctly, right? Uh, that's interesting for me because it was a different perspective on how to actually look at um, what we have going on. Because um, I know if we look at the history, whether it's replaced or not, we know who created it. We know what time and frame it was created in. We know who was at the bottom and who was at the top. No matter what they tried to erase from history, that still was a relevant factor. Whether or not they say something benefited um, or we greatly benefited, I mean, you know, that's pushing some lines there. But then when it comes to what we built, um, I do believe that if we did have a more equitable introduction into this great constitutional state that we are in um i do think i, I do think life will be more uh digestible for a lot of people actually because you would have to be a humanitarian to really understand the treatment for anybody to treat anybody less than less than you know and to abuse or mutilate or rape and pillage and take over like that's a very sick mentality and i, I we all have a bit of violence within our history, but that's that's a long line lineage that, you know, affected a lot of people that look like me. Um, and we live in a society with people that don't look like me created these laws that, again, I can understand the function. People do need a guideline um, to go through, um, but unfortunately, we were taught on how to walk a line of respect and not how to be included into um, this governmental society. So yeah, I can see it not being used correctly. And actually that ties into a level of accountability as we as black people to the point that once we understand that yes, there is something wrong with this system and that once you understand the system, you can understand how to use it to your advantage for the benefit of all not just the benefit of you and yours, because in all actuality, if accountability came in from us as people, like going and being a part of things that we know is boring and don't want to be a part <laughs> of, you know what I'm saying? Sitting there and listening to people say big words that all you really got to do is just Google on your own time, which I do all the time. I don't be knowing half the words that people be saying, but. <laughs> well, that's a great space though. That's a great space you bring up because. I get, you know me, because we got history. We know each other personally, right? So I, I get that all the time because I've been talking the same way since third grade. Like I was in the advanced gifted program studying Greek mythologies and analogies in third grade. So you can imagine talking to other third graders while we're passing a blunt to each other after school. Mm -hmm. But that was still me though, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was on the football team, they just called me brain. They knew that. Um, I happen to live next door to you, but I got 
three top 10 event finishes, one trip to the National Science Olympiad competition. I literally have an official 34 Wonderlick score that puts me in the top 2% of the nation, but I still, we still hung out together all the time. I never separated myself, but here's the thing that we have to be accountable for. We know the manifestation powers of words, right? We know mm -hmm. that they're basically equations, okay? So we know the magic, we know the spelling of it. Now, here's the thing I like to point out to the, to the people. We perform what we practice. That's what they taught us in football, right? Practice mm -hmm. to the level you want to perform in game time. Mm -hmm. To put it in perspective, we watched the nation go through chaos, get tore up in many places for the emotional response to a police shooting, right? Recently in the last few years. Now, what Pasha was saying was, if we pull up, matter of fact, let's do this real quick. Give me one second. All right. Because this is how easy it is when we when we when we apply this stuff when we become accountable okay mm -hmm. so if we look because i've won court cases on this this is part of why i don't have no friends <laughs> outside of april nah but look seriously though um if i had asked you let me do it like this let me not share it yet if i had asked you if we asked the general population yesterday without any pretense if you're in the chat drop it in the chat for entertainment purposes only you hop in the car behind the wheel, throwing a buck 30, I-85. Going to the store to get some groceries. Would you have said yesterday, or maybe you, I know you know some things, but let's say what the average person had said they were driving yesterday to the store. Would they consider themselves driving? Say it one more time. Behind the wheel, mm -hmm. doing this through traffic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are they driving to themselves? I mean, I guess so. I would say okay. possibly, maybe. To All the right. average person, they would think they're driving. Yeah. Okay, cool. So here we go. When you look at the actual Black's Law Dictionary for entertainment purposes, it's not legal advice. It defines driver as one who is employed to conduct or employed in conducting a coach wagon, da 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 da, -da motor vehicle, motor car, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when we go to the United States Code, Title 18, Section 31, it tells us that a commercial vehicle is used, for, excuse me, a motor vehicle is used for commercial purposes, uh -huh. right? It uh -huh. tells us that a, it tells us that a passenger is one who pays a fee or a fare. Uh -huh. So if, if we hop in a car together and go to the store, we're not, whoever is not behind the wheel isn't the passenger. We just a guest in a contravance. Uh -huh. Okay. So what is this? What is this all about, Pasha? Because if we don't articulate the words to the standard then we're not communicating the truth anything else with that we've seen is emotional right Hi. because if you get in there and say hey you can't pull me over they go you know that's why we get me what i'm getting at is if we all knew how to properly use the word driver and use the word traveler we knew what a driver really was we could reduce police shootings in the nation by 80 percent whether you think it's the United States or you know it's America, because 80% of police shootings start with a traffic stop. And why do we keep pulling us over? No matter if they actually kill, when you look at the statistics anyway, they kill more what people will call white people, almost twice as many as them as they do us, but it don't make the news and headlines like that. You know, every group has their own affinity when it's their own, the Oriental people, the Asian people, um, the Mexicans, they all feel it when it's one of their own differently. Right. So my point is, once we become standardized in the actual true value of these words and why they are what they are, something like that, just that one word, we reduce police shootings in the nation by 80 percent because 80 percent start with a traffic stop. And it's only they're only stopping us because we don't know the state that we're not drivers in most cases. So this is why it's like, okay, we hear the words being used. Yeah, it's big. It might be longer. We might got some swag. It might sound better. But then when it comes time and need, what are we doing? We're sitting there hoping and praying that the cop don't shoot us because we can't, we don't know to stand on the fact that, look, I ain't a driver. I'm a traveler. Get your supervisor. 
Well, let me add this then, because okay. I do understand, right? And I know help, help I know me. who I'm talking to as far as with, you know, being sovereign in status and everything. Hey, if we, we do if we go back to accountability and with okay. even accountability, whether or not someone actually knew to use those terminologies, right? How I see those words that are used, right, when it comes to traffic stops sometimes, right? And people might hate me. But being a person that got pulled been pulled over several times. Several, several, several Give times. It Give it right? to me. I know that how you speak, how you act definitely matters, right? Yeah. I'm not avoiding the fact of racist cops. I'm not avoiding the fact that they're disrespectful. I'm not avoiding any of that. But when it comes with the level of accountability and holding a high level of respect and understanding and being a person that has been pulled over numerous times, mm -hmm been arrested a couple of them <laughs> went through the process i can actually say that when you know your rights and how you actually are supposed to operate things do happen differently it's a level of accountability on both sides being a person that if i knew i got pulled over and i was not in the wrong that means no seatbelt you know i have a seatbelt on wasn't speeding wasn't anything like that my whole demeanor is different mm -hmm. how i'm going to communicate with said officer is going to be different because again if i know i was not in the wrong i know it needs to be proven to me but i also know my demeanor and how i approach the situation given the climate given the understanding that this person has authority in a gun and has authority to shoot me for me the level of accountability as a black person that now has been trained and understands my rights and roles as being a person and how i'm supposed to operate in order to live in as much as peace as possible, I'm gonna get pulled over. If I'm all the way in the right, in my pullover, I'm gonna comply. I'm gonna ask simple questions. When they ask me a question, I will answer said question to one officer only because you know they come in pairs. I'm not talking to both of them. We're not doing any of that. I'm going through the process. If, if I know whatever he says out his mouth, is 100% wrong, there's no need for me to argue with it. Go with your process. I'm going to fight it on the end, right? I'll be right back out. And when I come right back out, one, I'm surviving. And two, now I got a complaint and possibly a lawsuit, depending on how that cop interacted with me. Now, now that's you... me being in the right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Which is, which is a lot of times, right? So oh, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. I say and I introduce it and being a person that has been pulled over. And being wrong. <laughs> well, I, I'm questioning if you were really wrong or not because. Um. Well, okay. Level of transparency. If I have a warrant and I know the police behind me, my attitude is going to change. True. Being in that position and being that's a lot of the times where our black people actually in, I got an active warrant. <laughs> police don't pull that. I know I'm going to jail. <laughs> no, I I can dig it. A lot of people can. Period. Relate. How, that's the relatable part of where I'm saying now I am acting different, but I also have to hold myself accountable to know I was in the wrong. I should have took my ass and been took care of that warrant. But since I didn't, my mm -hmm. attitude now, okay, you got me. Right. Right. The warrant, now, the warrant is the cool part. And, and yeah, you know, so that means they want me to go show myself or whatever. I know what I don't want to do. But again, my level of accountability at this point. I know I have this one. So again, does it make sense for me to then do what? Run? I'm lazy as hell. Are they going to catch me and they going to be mad because they running and I'm mad because <laughs> I don't run. You know what I'm saying? My level of accountability. I know my levels. You caught me. But yet again, I know the process will happen. I know I'll get like that. I know I will get out. But then I also will add that now in my position now, I know I have more resources to be able to protect myself on both ends. At that time, when this was active, when April was not April, who she is in the community, but a member of the community. The community. <laughs> right. We all got a pass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got one. I got one. But when right. I was that person, like I didn't know like the best way to do it. All I know is I'm hot and I'm going to stay away from them hot boys. So that right. still leaves me with the level of accountability is I don't need to be nowhere where the police is at because I know I'm not right. 
That means when, I don't when, need to be behind the car driving because, like you said, if I'm a driver, transport, and a traveler or whatnot, I know that it's ample way for me to get pulled over and go to jail. And then when I do go to jail, it's like you said, behind a traffic stop. But I survived. I be hot. And don't get me mad. I got some very mean mug shots. But I <laughs> And it's probably some officers that probably was very mad that I said some very, very mean stuff, depending on when they got me. But I survived. <laughs> I'm a survivor, right? So, I look, I you made tremendous points because, one, just being accountable for yourself, right? The self-accountability, having the knowledge of knowing, all right, this motherfucking cop don't know what he's talking about. But to know that they not all trained, most of them aren't trained to know what they're talking about. They're just trained to know procedure. Mm -hmm. They're like a salesman. They're trained to get the get the sale. So no matter what you say, they're trying to get the sale. You just happen to be the sale, right? So now you know that, like you said, now you know in that situation. Okay, let me play this role. Boom, I'm gonna handle it on the paperwork side because when I go to court and drop the Supreme Court cases on them, that's the authority. Fuck what he's saying. We gonna make it out of tonight. I'm gonna go handle that shit. And when enough of us start doing it like that, and they start getting these lawsuits, then they gonna stop pulling us over, right? Mm -hmm. We all got issues for entertainment purposes only. It's not legal advice, but when you're a traveler, the, the National Highway Traffic Safety Act doesn't even apply to you. It only applies to commercial traffic. This is why they can sell you a car that goes 250 miles an hour and then tell you, oh, you're only supposed to do 55 in it because it really don't matter as long as you don't create any injury or tort, right? So what happens is, that's why I said you might not be wrong because a lot of people are getting pulled over for things that don't even apply to them, right? Mm -hmm. We've all been, we've all had to take the accountability for the moment. Shit, the only reason I ain't a felon, you know what I mean, is because I've been in four police chases. I just got away <laughs> on all the ones. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? That's why we used to race everywhere. We think we was doing 150 on the highway for nothing? Nah, it comes in handy when you need that shit. Power sliding with the Honda pulling a pulling an oh, emergency brake sliding around the corner that comes in it comes in here but we grow up and we ma we mature right yeah we do get we evolve yes right? we evolve you, you, you change and you do better like I said when you know better you do better right now it was rough now you get this you know you smooth it out the surface you get polished yeah you, you become polished smooth right out, you know what I'm saying okay. I ain't gonna do that no more I learned okay. my lesson I right. got you I see I see. But I'm do gonna you do it remember this way, the time, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah <laughs> so, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna do it this way. I, okay. I learned not don't do it that way. I got okay. you. That okay. that stuff is bad. Hey, got look, I, I'm from Wilmington, Delaware. Look at the Biden family. Okay, mm. that that's where I, I come from. <laughs> you see mm. what I'm saying? So anyway, now I, that's the accountability factor. And where we got on that great tangent from, which I think was very um, enlightening, was that there is power in words. So let's take the accountability to say, wow, you know what? These fucking big words are annoying. They're fatiguing in the beginning, but they're valuable. They're uh -huh. value added, right? Just like any other uh -huh. concept. So now we can stand, we can stand on our square together. Okay. All right. So because I think that's important. Language is important because you you remember if you know etym well, not to say if you know etym but etymology, you know I'm a fan of etymology. The word technology originally referred to grammar so think about all the technology we got the original application of that word was grammar well, so our language that. is the our language is our biggest technology that's why they took it from us yeah i can see that because again if you don't communicate effectively on how to explain anything technical like they won't be able to do hickey their hickey do hickey their hickey <laughs> so and so here's it so it's a little bit of um it's a little bit of value, like because if we dumb it down, right? Then we then it's dumbed down too much that we don't even understand what the truth is, which is why we're hopping in a car thinking we're drivers when the cop asks us for a driver's license because it's strongly implied and normative social influence have us going along with it because we don't we want to be like the rest of the people we know we want to fit in, right? So let's look at this. I want to let's look at this real quick because what you said about history, I want to I want to get your opinion on because a lot of what's going on. You know me, you know we having fun. So a lot of what's going on, I want to pose this question to the community at large, is because we don't know what we don't know, right? And a lot of what was sold to us exploited that fact. So here's this thing called some images from the Chicago World's Fair, right? And they had these World's Fairs all over 
the globe. They had St. Louis, they had them in California, um, San Francisco, they had them in Paris, like all over the place, right? Now, if I click on this right here, just make it a little bigger in the screen. If I didn't just tell you that was Chicago, you wouldn't know what part of the world that was in, would you? Uh-uh. The average person. It could uh-huh. be Greece. It could be some Roman building they telling us, right? Right. Uh-huh. And see, the reason why that is is because there was there was a one world civilization. The architecture was the same all around the globe for the same time period. They're teaching us about Rome and Greece and Egypt, but they're hiding the fact that the buildings were on this land too. And the reason they're doing that is because it doesn't fit the mold of their story of hey, we went to the new land and we found these people running around going, ooh, right? It doesn't fit that story because these buildings were all over the place and some of them were inherited, like buried, like the like the Mormon temple, right? You know the Mormon temple in Salt Lake City? Not really. I know of the Mormon temple of one where it is geographically. I have no idea. Okay, no worries. Let me show you this real quick. Because this is why this stuff is it's important. That if we're going to know who we are, we have to know, you know, who we are, right? So what they did was they came up with this fascinating story. I'm not saying the story that they gave us, right, didn't exist at all. What I'm saying is it was greatly exaggerated to cover up the fact that we were already here mm-hmm. and we were already civilized to the same level as the rest of the world because it was a one world civilization, that are that's why the Africa when you go into certain accounts in the African uh antiquities, they're telling you that they were already trading with the Americas long before the Europeans started sailing here. And when you follow that story, it tells you, or those accounts, it tells you that the 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 Moors, right, were actually the kings and queens of Spain and of Europe until their slaves, which was the Europeans at the time, overthrew them. And, what, and the reason they got power was because just like in the stories they gave us about slavery here, the, the slave masters was having relationships with the with the slaves. So the ones that were the dark skinned African kings and queens had children with their European slaves. And when they fell, they rose up and inherited the throne by blood. And right after that fall happened, this is when they started sending their ships over to the Americas. But they already knew we were here. All right, look at this real quick, and I'll I'll spend a couple of moments on this, and then we can move on, because I think this is it helps connect stuff that we take for we uh, overlook because we take it for granted. We all know. Um, here we go. So, this is the Mormon Temple, right? To give it a, this is the foundation repair. So it's a really big building, like you can see it here. Mm-hmm. It's huge. It's like one of those what they call megaliths or my, whatever. Huge, right? So now keep in mind, what we need to consider is that during this time period is when they said the Mormons went west with uh, 15 to 20,000, not just men, but men, women and children during a time period where technology was horse and buggy. And they want us to believe that they came there, they landed, you know, their little horse and buggy going across the country. 15,000, 20,000 men, women, and children. And they not only built this huge building, but they built a lot of other megalithic structures and built out the whole city of Salt Lake City and other cities in Utah, etc. cetera, with 15,000 people, right? So here's what they found when they did the foundational repair work. And I think the elites knew this, and this is why they had them go do this. When you look at this top line here, this was the original ground level, as we were told in, in the story. Okay. But when they started digging down, you can see here, this gap here is 14 feet from this line to this line. Right here, if you look closely or you go Google this yourself for the people that's in the the comments, you can see that this is the original entrance that was buried. Here, you can see where the window that was here and stopped at the ground actually was a full window that was buried. This building was partially buried they found it and just renovated a new entrance into it. This line here goes down another 16 feet to the, there's some other pictures that show you the drop there where you can see it. It's another 16 feet down. And they said they still didn't find the bottom of the building yet. So what happened was there was a great 
you know, a lot of people mention and talk about the great calamity or great destruction period where um, a lot of buildings were buried partially. Some were melted. Ironically, you think they're mountains or little hills today and you dig into them and you can actually see uh, brick and mortar after you get so far. And of course, some was completely destroyed. Right. So what they were hiding was not only were we already here, many of us, our, our lineages, because we go to Webster 1828, it tells you that the copper colored people, the Americans are the copper colored people found here by the Europeans. And there's a distinction between the shades of copper, right? There's, and then the shades of African, like right? blues, darks, and blacks skin, right? There's a distinction. So the, Af the Americans were the copper colored people found here by the Europeans when they arrived, right? The magic behind that, I think, and tell me what this is, uh, and I, I had the floor long enough, give you some time. If we were to actually rise up and take accountability right now, in our ignorance, the best we'll ask for is reparations, which they're going to print anyway and put the country into debt. It wouldn't even matter. But if we knew who we really were, we would ask for the whole continent back because we were already here. Like I showed you with the full civilization in these buildings, those that's what America looked like when they got here. They tore it down. I'll close with this. The story of the World's Fair was they took two years, built these elaborate buildings huh? for a six-month fair, and then destroyed them afterwards. That's how they sold to getting rid of them. They were erasing the history of what America was because it didn't fit their narrative. All right. Go wherever you want to go with that. I was trying to process it, too, as well. So that's me thinking about it. Do it. Do it. Because I'm not a scholar, number one, on these type of uh, Western philosophies, right? I'm just a person that enjoys learning new things. And um, I apply need. it in real life form as it makes sense to me. And it seems that there's a population that may agree with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Voice matters. Um, but I can understand the point of us accepting our ignorance in things that matter to our culture. Then I can acknowledge that within our culture, even with those that were already here, like it, it was still, it's still different when it comes with Moors because yet again, not everyone was an actual Moor that was already here in America. No, no, the Moors weren't here. The Moors are actually. African. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, but go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Who was here? The, who was here already in the Americas when it was discovered? I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> oh, that already had a dynamic diversity of who was already here. So that means you already had different cultures, backgrounds, different um, traditions, ideologies, right? So what I'm understanding is that we've always had different perspectives within cultures. Mm -hmm. And I'm understanding that at one time, um, there was an understanding that, you know, you leave well enough alone. People had their guidelines for trade and commerce. Um, even though there were slaves or enslaved people, they're still treated humanitarianly. Um, even in other cultures that people always bring up, yes, we had Black people own slaves, but they didn't beat, mutilate, rape. You know what I'm saying? What I read, it was mm -hmm. different work ethics that was put into why they were a slave person or captured from war or whatever, indentured servitude, different variations. Since we all have all these perspectives, I think just acknowledging that we have all these perspectives is like the easy, well, not the easy step. That's the first step. Like just acknowledge like everybody has these different understandings of where their culture and background came from. Yes. And the ignorance comes from, you don't know if you haven't taken the time to even look. I had dabbled a little bit. I stopped looking. <laughs> I will, I will be honest, right? I have done uh, some some history in into my my background, and I I personally just didn't want to find out no more. Okay, that's that's my right, that's my privilege. Um, mm -hmm. but within that, me knowing that at least of asking for reparations, yeah, me being a person, I wouldn't ask this government for a dang a dollar amount because, like you just said, they're gonna print all of this money. The debt is gonna be even more than the dollars that they just gave us is gonna be useless. However, I do agree with you. I would ask for 
the land back. But I see the diversity that will happen and the infighting that will happen because within these cultures that will always been here, then the problem is how much is too much for any group mm. of people. And since nobody really knows or nobody's fair and equitable thinking of how much land does a really a person need to be able to live? Like, do you need these big old gigantic 20 home <laughs> mansions for two people, three people, four people, right? Is that something? Um, is it, is it something that some people might not even want a home? They might want to just live in the wilderness on, on a beach house somewhere. It's like, um, the, getting access to the land or redistributing the land is something that I think will just be so divisive in the fact of like, can we just agree with terminology of what we can do for each other? That's just going to benefit each other in this whole, yeah, um, think, and just that's... go from there. Um, that means simply if a person uh, that can acknowledge and see a bit of land and say they want to build a house and all they need really for this house is an acre of land. Is it too much for someone to request in a national database an acre of land to be able to build this? And then for that individual, they can establish whatever or maybe there's another bucket of I want you now contribute this or make this or whatever. I mean, it's. It's just how people think about it, um, especially with, with reparations. Um, reparations, it should definitely should not come in the form of a dollar amount. It should come in something that we can actually tangibly put our hands on because we tangibly used our hands to create this place. Um, and again, that might just come with having access, like clear access. But then it's like the dangers is when it comes to accountability of who is the person to make sure that it will be equitably distributed and it can't be the government because they weren't built on equitable distribution of anything so <laughs> government <laughs> So you can't say government fix it. And the only reason right. why I'm pushing the government can't fix it because just that thing, they weren't based and created on equitable distribution of anything. So we as a people have to understand that maybe at some point we might have to um, allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to at least be in spaces that encourage these type of discussions um, and not be in a room full of people that are dead set on just causing confusion um, mm -hmm. because people really got to understand when it comes with us changing, even as a people, we still have people that are set out here to cause confusion and Sometimes confusion comes from an unhealed person unintentionally just causing destruction just because they feel a way. And then we have skilled, trained individuals that are strategically set up here to cause confusion and put us back um, in a dynamic of we can't move forward or they can keep they keep making us believe that we can't move forward, specifically as black people, but also even in reparations. I think reparations should come in the form of we have a clear space. Um, that only black people are allowed to have conversation no matter how and what uncomfortable it makes people feel, but black people should be able to build a system so we can rebuild harm, trust, care, concern, and we have time to actually develop a common G code that we all can agree on. And that's going to take us being in places that we are going to argue because people are allowed to have a different of opinion, but you are expected as a people to understand that in these spaces, keep it respectful. There is no low blows. Like speaking in your perspective of what you saw and what you want to incorporate, incorporate into a new beginning for black people specifically. Um, making making it a, a requirement that in any black space and anytime there's an issue with black people's treatment if there is never a solution offered from someone then dialogue needs to stop there's no need to pursue a dialogue that is only um pointing out what we already know the issues are within our black people right we know males and females especially black people we, we ain't been vibing well, right? We, ain't, we haven't been treating each other well. Males, females in general, black women, black males in general, we haven't been treating each other right. And it came from hurt, trauma, and oppression. 
And it's at some point, it's up to us as black people, male and female, to state, Pasha, me as a woman, I acknowledge you. I appreciate your efforts into the world. I know I might not always understand you. We may not always get along, but I support you as a black woman. And therefore I'm here today. And we push forward. That's it. Absolutely. And that's you, Pasha, being a male, me being a woman, experiencing other negative males, but looking at you and saying, you are a male. I respect you. I appreciate you, period. And leave it at that. Let's start there. I appreciate it. I appreciate that direction for the community and you bring up a lot of great points that that i think we need to just once over to show the real true value of it because truth is infinite you can't be true without considering the infinity right mm -hmm. and then what we have to also accept is those dynamics that you're speaking about like the disconnects in our because the word relate means the etymology of the word relate is respect mm -hmm. so you know how i got the saying about not being emotional so you look at how our community or look at how people in general react when they say they felt disrespected mm. okay what they're really yeah. saying if we knew what that word meant watch how this energy changed right it goes from someone getting shot in a nightclub to watch this oh man we just couldn't relate on that topic yeah it's totally the same different. right so now, right, what's happening is the disrespect is actually on ourselves because what we did is we delegated the authority of our children's education and indoctrination to the government who made them products, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't teach them the real antiquity that we showed here, right? Controls the financial currency, the economy, the economic conditions, the interest rate, the inflation rate. We done delegated authority to every fucking thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is why these conversations are building up to we have to set the, the, the foundation so the community can understand why they need to buy into the change that we need to set forward with together. Right. Because we got to understand what the difference is because we've been sedated. We've been sedated. We didn't know that those buildings were our buildings before and they were here and we were like Rome back when Rome was going on, but it was here too. We didn't know that. So we don't, we, we would fight for it differently if we knew that's what it was about. We would be more aggressive. So at the same time, we know we got some, some people black, as you call them black, you know me, I'm, I'm Americans. I say we're Americans, but that's some legal, some political yeah. subdivision stuff on check boxes. But look, what we're talking about is the people that look like me and you, but mm -hmm. we're also talking about the people that don't because the government don't put us all under the sub some categories of political subdivisions. No matter what box you check, it's all the same thing because they're using the word person and people don't know the difference between juridical person and natural person. And they never told you which person they were using when you check that box. Right. But that's another conversation. But here's the here's what I'm getting at. We have to stop wanting to convert people. That's that's our biggest problem. We look at people and say, well, because you not this, there's something wrong with you. Instead of saying, wow, I'm proud of you for being what you are. How do I help feed you to become better what you are? Okay, you you gunning up the street. You know what? That's our fault. We need to take accountability for that because we didn't tell you what targets to shoot at. That's why mm -hmm. you run around here shooting at each other because exactly. we, the leadership, didn't give you the targets to go take out in the field. Exactly. So we can't it's blame exactly the shooters correct. because the shooter going to be the shooter because they were born a shooter, right? Exactly. We can't blame the nerds for going and doing you know archaeology <laughs> right because they need to dig up the shit so we can know it so we know what to shoot for you see what i'm saying now we know why we busting our guns do we bust them till they come Hell, yeah. we can make... right now we know why we shooting because yeah. we had to, we had this group go do the research for us right then we had these people over here go and take it to the speaking part to make the education flow through the bloodstreams and the veins of our communities because they're the social people right they're the ones that's going to be able to translate it for the community and make it in words that they can understand without losing its potency. They already have the following because their swag is already adapted to the swag of their leaders. So why would I step in and be like, hey, listen to me, I'm Pasha, because I talk differently. I move differently. They're not, they're not going to, it'll take more time for them to understand why they should listen to me than to just say, hey, give it to your leader, put this in the streets. See, this is accountability. 
once we come together and recognize we need to be accountable then we start understanding the value and then things change because everybody can buy in start with the why as simon sinek says mm -hmm. so i appreciate you uh taking this time out um because you know what my biggest fascination is was to buy a city back when tiller oregon was for sale in the first time it was 256 acres I'm had so six residents 3.6 million is all they wanted for it like when you were talking about this this cash flow flowing and what we do with it they wanted 3.6 million an extra 300,000 got you to school and yeah it's old it's run down but now think about it when you think about these artists like we got music people around us we think about them becoming successful or, or there's kids coming out of these high schools going to the NBA to the NFL becoming successful we start to say hey you're getting a five million dollar home you're getting a ten million dollar home well here's a, a 3.6 million dollar town if you want when you study the fact that the average home in regards if you think it's america uh, united states or you know it's america the average home plot is a quarter acre so if you wanted to maximize um population you could get a thousand homes in there but you want to have nice roads you want to have parks you want to have a little shopping area to start because even charlotte was 256 acres at some point back in the day right so mm -hmm. imagine if we go in now three million build it all up maybe spend an extra 10 million who knows what on there put it up put it the way we want it we got technology like wi-fi for everybody could be free we got technology that exists now where we could put solar fuck the asphalt we have solar panel roadways with the little honeycomb thing you could just something break a little pipe break you just pop out that honeycomb section and put in a new one like that technology has been out for almost a decade now so what would it look like if we go in and built the city of our dreams and expanded and grew it put some missiles on it like the white house and then we then we keep growing right but we got to know why why we why that's the goal and i think these these conversations start that in our heart <clears throat> yeah i can agree on that one i mean right. it takes me into the housing that we actually need the, the community that we actually need um and how we actually turn out a real example that's that's my hidden agenda <laughs> it, ain't hidden. it ain't hidden it ain't hidden it's no. needed it's needed and i appreciate you for doing it and being out there um act active in motion okay I mean, it, what else am I supposed to do? Be at, at home on the couch complaining and fussing when I can get right here in the thick of it. And the good thing is I can see my influence in so many happenings in Mecklenburg County that, I mean, um, I'm, again, I know I'm impactful. I see my influence in plenty of places in Mecklenburg County, and I'm appreciative of that. So much so I don't have to say nothing about what i do because i don't do nothing i influence yep. i i introduce new perspectives articulated new perspectives <laughs> got it, you got it and you know honestly that's that's part of why it was so um it was such a pleasure creating this logo for you and what it means when you look at the the embodiments of it you know and the um, tagline being seen eye to eye so i really appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this and and, and help you um with this design to better connect the community on the path because I like to invest in people that share the same destination, right? And are actually quality and character and their deliverables. So I have your um, contact information scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Tell the people a little bit about Kinetic and exactly who you're looking to help and why. Dang, I gotta give my why. Huh? Let me give. Do I have to do like the elevator speech? That you I do. You do the me? April speech, okay, April. You give it to them <laughs> how you give it to them, and they need to accept it for value. And they got questions, then the email and the website is below. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, Kinetic Works definitely was the beginning stages of how can I uh, put my skills to use, right? And make sure that I'm able to be taken care of financially and um, grow a space that I needed, right? To be me and Healed. be able to say, this is, this is it, right? This is, this is my effort into whatever that I have touched. 
that's where it started. Um, as of today, I'm actually going through some um, planning and strategizing um, because I always want to be able to meet a need in the community. Uh, being a skilled organizer, uh, I have been able to hear the feedback of the community. And again, being effective, I'm also a target. Uh, so I have to make sure that I'm able to maneuver and be a, a resource in a way that also will protect myself. Um, so what's happening is um, the allowance of visions, right? Um, we definitely need support here. We definitely need somebody that isn't um, trying to just take from you, but pour into you. But within that pouring into it's I know people, connections. I think something might help you to be a better whatever. Um, some people might need someone just to believe in them and be able to say, well, here's an opportunity to try something, right? With no pressure and fun. Um, I'm also working to create a space where we are healing each other, right? Because I am very, very particular about who I allow in these spaces, not so much of like um, nitpicking, or like being a gatekeeper, but I'm protecting the energy and I'm protecting a space that needs true, honest, transparent discussions, dialogues, um, and offers grace. Mm -hmm. We build millionaires is what we're building together. Healed millionaires with a very clear perspective and a diverse way of thinking of how to affect impactful change within the community. Um, it's a space that youth, seniors, everyone can actually build their vision and get hands on support to make it happen. Yes, you're gonna have somebody as dedicated as you to your vision, right? Let's make it happen. I'm, I think I'm, I'm building an ecosystem for generational wealth building for black people specifically that all can take part in, but specifically for black people, um, I'm working to build an ecosystem that we can we can be the, the, the saviors that we need for each other while being respectful, while learning how we can actually build and deal with conflict as we as we grow and trust each other. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a consulting firm that has turned into an ecosystem for success. And with that, uh, comes with a network and um, connections and an uh, individual that is hands-on with implementation uh, when it comes to strategizing, when it comes to facilitation, when it comes to just being what someone needs to be a part of. Um, mm -hmm. It's a collective being built of business owners. We're building out millionaires, but we're helping each other to do it. Uh, so it's so many different avenues that's coming that's still under under works, but most notably right now, you know, you just have a solution oriented individual, a skilled organizer that's offered offering uh, facilitation services, proposals based on what you actually need to be impactful and effective in the community is is what I offer. Um, and then being a support, uh, a resource and definitely a connection when it comes to community building and community repair. Uh, you have a, a, a dedicated person here to the movement, but I will not allow the community to kill me because community will be held accountable. accountable. Just like everybody holds me accountable if I don't show up somewhere. <laughs> community, I do the same thing. But if anything else, I'm just a real person that's looking to help people. And again, you know, I know people that are looking to be a resource so make that connection and then some people just need help to get it done i don't mind being that person right and that's the easiest <laughs> way to do to frame it in a nutshell I'm, I'm i'm being what the people need to see i'm being a headquarters of building true true black love right when it comes to business generational wealth education and i'm asking everybody just to be a part of it this is a trail that something is building everybody can bring their skill sets um to what's coming uh to build out that community that we definitely need and it's starting in mecklenburg county is what's happening <clears throat> critical mass is what's mm -hmm. needed mm -hmm. and you are facilitating and i appreciate it because you know you made a great point in it when you first opened and you said, I, 
in summary, you said, I have to take care of me. Right. And what people, what I learned that was interesting is a lot of times we feel like we're going to be able to get right ourselves and then go somewhere where it's going to be right. Mm -hmm. But the problem is we haven't built where that right place is. Yeah. And the thing is, no matter where we run to, it's only a matter of time before what we running from shows up at the door. Democracy, motherfucker. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to change some shit. Right. <laughs> but so we can't. So you, when you realize that. It makes no sense to focus. What you learn is that in realizing that is in order to heal self. In order to make self sustainable, we have to make all healed. We have to make all sustainable because we can't protect ourselves if we can't protect our community. Mm -hmm. So we can't run. We got to do what the bison do when the storm comes, not run from the storm, but run towards it. Yeah, on the other side, get through it. That's the fastest way through it. So we need to come together empower each other stop trying to convert people see what they're good at feed them what they need to make them great at who they are and then what we have to do is agree on a destination mm -hmm. some people are going to be remote some people are going to be on site you can handle stuff in alaska if you wanted to right here the same way we're having this conversation right now so when you look at a person like me process optimization background i would like to see my community embracing that don't knock it because it's efficient. We don't have the budget to send April back and forth to Texas right now, twice a week, because you haven't contributed. Now, if you want to contribute some dollars, oh. for these plane tickets, oh. go yeah. ahead and do that. But in yeah. the meantime, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you the floor like this. In the meantime, though, if the most efficient way to have these conversations are digital, then let's use the technology. We both talk to a lot of business owners. You know what? That, I've been studying this for years. And you know what they say? We like in-person meetings because you get the the feeling and then, you know, the the body language. And, and they gave me a whole laundry list of shit that was all, you know, me. You know how I'd be looking at shit. It was all emotional. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there from a leadership standpoint, like nothing they said was like, because this will help secure the fact that we have success or we complete the project or we stay on task to why we came here. None of the answers was about that. And I was yeah. just looking at that shit. Like that's what they don't think. That's that's why you have people that keep meeting to meet to meet, because it's a social hour. See, that's one other different. Come to death row records. We meet to bro. Eat. look. Right. <laughs> right. So so the and the and the point I'm making is when you got the right team that's focused on the destination, it don't matter where you meeting from and how much distance is in between you, because the goal is the focus, yeah. not did you twitch your lip or blink your eye twice or look away? You know what I mean? Like everything, that's the same shit. Look, that finger wait, pointing wait, wait. back. Let me, not, let me not knock it because I do both. Now, I can understand being a person that <laughs> tries hybrid meshes because sometimes, right, when you're building trust with people, you do need to have them in place, right? Because you need to know who is influencing them. And the only way you can make sure that you're not influencing or getting, they're not getting influenced by others is they have to be in the room. That means you're controlling the dynamic. So I can say, if I want somebody to meet in person, it's because I want to control the dynamic of, I want to make sure that what we're talking about stays here, right? I want to know that what we're building on, that we can actually touch something. If we are meeting okay. in person, that means we're doing an actual vision board so we can actually go to the next step for implementation. I'm giving y'all my sauce, but this is it, right? We don't okay. meet just to meet because I got I don't have time for that either. Like you just said, it's people that can need me in another state that will benefit. But I can also speak to them digitally and pour into them mm -hmm. and allow them the space and place to create what they need and go from right. there. And this and this now, now we're OK. So now we're getting into some deep stuff here. This is high value for business owners and community alike, because what you bring up there is the necessity for having the right people in place. Mm -hmm. Because when you have the right people, you don't have to worry about X, Y, and Z. Correct. But at the same time, it's just like a, it's just like the chicks or and dudes even that, or let me say, male and female, men and women, all right, that look like or expect a title, boyfriend, girlfriend, marriage, to protect them from something that it don't. You see what I'm saying? And I know we got clothes out here, so. 
from my experience, let's say vice chairman of the maintenance reliability chapter for 3M Global, I'm having meetings with the maintenance departments in Singapore. I'm not showing up to Singapore for no room meeting. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What, but what, what, we get that shit done though because we're invested in the in the uh, the success. So it's actually quite more efficient. But yeah, in person works. And if we not gonna go all the time, that, it, yeah, it, not, I'm not. I'm not gonna say nothing, all the time. Nothing's yeah, all not, the time. Yeah, but right? I'm saying like maybe the first one to two meetings, like just to really see who's dedicated to the work too as well. Yeah, yeah. We so don't. That's my reason. If I ask you to show up to a meeting, number one, I probably don't even want to show up to the damn meeting. <laughs> so, <laughs> Marie, that's why we do it vertical, man. Exactly. So, me, um, exactly. so if I show up. Then autumn ain't no food present. Then please know we get into it <laughs> real quick. <laughs> he said we're gonna make sure it's gonna be a quick meeting. I I'm no trying to say we need we need to hit these deliverables, what we're trying to do. But by, right. by the end of the meeting, we either have our next meeting day or we know what we're supposed to be working on, talking about or something. You ain't about to have me in the room talking about the shoulda coulda woulders and we should have did this uh, and why can't I, I like will it. leave? <laughs> I like All right, so so I think here's some solutions that I've been working on, you know, just saying it for the people in different spaces. The one thing that we need to do is we need to actually separate from currency. I know that's going to sound crazy in the beginning, but we're a lot closer than what we think we are. Yeah, um, that's the, that's it right there. You said that one. Automation. We're a lot closer to not having money make any damn sense. So, yeah, I'm with you. Right. Going back to bartering, skill set, tangible items that we can actually use, growing gardens, growing things. If somebody else has a skill set that can make something in the future use, coming collectively to hold everything together. One space for disaster relief, because no, if shit hit the fan, black people, y'all the last, last <laughs> to get anything. But if you already got it in the neighborhood, that exactly. candy lady, that, that person that's selling in the hood, y'all need to respect them and pour into them. Because when the shit hit the fan, that's who you're going to run to because they're going to have what you need because they've been stocking up and preparing to be able to distribute this commodity at that time. But if we are stepping mm-hmm. away from money, the commodity is I am building and sowing a seed of trust within my community. So that way we are building that we are going to stand together because ain't nobody coming to save us, but who's me- around us. Give me some feedback from your network over the next few weeks. You know what I mean? Because what I'm looking for is this, right? This mm-hmm. is the goal. And I get very, I get different responses. But when you look at the Constitution, right? The fact that you can't have, I'm going to say it like this. You can't have, we can't have equality in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in a currency-based society. I don't care if you switch over to uh, Bitcoin digital currency, gold, because somebody's going to attempt to regulate it and control the resource. And that's going to regulate and control people's access to all the other resources. What we have to get to is the point where everything is just free. So get well, throw well, that, throw wait, that conversation wait. around. and Yeah, I throw that around because when you say we're free, that means accountability part and understanding you take only what you need to survive. And people don't know how to do that. So therefore, it can't be free. It has to be monetary because people don't know how to take only what you need to survive, especially if you know tomorrow you'll wake up and you will have the abundance. Yes, yes, and yes and no. And then I'll close here. I'll close here. <laughs> In closing, what if if the auto, automation factor comes into play and not corruption, not corrupted to oh. weaponize against us? everything will race to a zero point cost to produce so reality everybody's not gonna wake up tomorrow and want a porsche if it was free some people are still gonna want a toyota right so we're gonna have that dynamic still exist but closing remarks to the people april power to the people power to the people (laughs) like show up in these spaces and places and you'll learn so much more Stop being ignorant of saying it is what it is. You're right. It is what it is because you don't show up to make it something different. The only difference that I do for anybody to hate me is I show up. I make sure I understand what is happening. All perspectives and dynamics, taking all information, then make a logical decision on what I feel is the best effort or most equitable approach. But I show up and I, I make sure I take space and I'm unapologetically black. 
and I love black people and we should love each other more and respect each other more and I'm out. <laughs> That's what's up. The word accountability means to count and you got to make your count count. So like she's saying, show up. And then what happens is as we show up in those layers, there's levels of stuff. So once we reach the critical mass of people showing up on this level, you know, what's that saying? When the student is ready, the teacher appears, right? So once we get the community level here, then the, then the people that was helping in the background that you may never even heard about before, now they can show up because the worst thing to do is to show up before the group is ready because now they're mm -hmm. going to be turned against themselves. They're going to feel, they're going to get emotional. They're going to feel down. We're trying to chin everybody up. So we got to yep. take this in steps. So you show up with the people and then when everybody gets ready, we can go to the next level and boom, 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 boom. Pasha mm -hmm. Pablo, April, say bye to the people. Bye, people. Pasha Pablo, <laughs> bye, that's